sound test one two three four we will start at this time assuming that everything works Hi, Advenu. Now, what about YouTube? Okay, it works. Today, I will do. I will handle chat on both platforms just to see how's YouTube recently. It used to be a case that only I did Twitch chat. And I'm doing this as a part of experiment to see if maybe I should, if maybe just YouTube is enough. Hi Alejandro, hi Algotalk. Algotalk sounds like a YouTube channel. Do you do YouTube? The plan for today is to finish tasks from yesterday. I did everything up to D and I also did F. Uh, what I didn't do was E, G and maybe H small. I know some spoilers because of Facebook chat with my friends. Also, let's see a test of something. Okay, I uh, I can highlight a message. I don't know if the bottom left corner of the screen is a good idea for that. But I can highlight a Twitch message. And maybe it will be easier for me. I don't want to display the whole chat. I used to do that, but I think it's too much chaos and it's usually not related to the stream. The stream is meant to be educational, not really community driven. And I can for, I think it's set to 20 seconds or something like that by default. I can display a message. I think that should be convenient. I'm thinking to make videos on no, I cannot highlight them. I cannot highlight messages from YouTube, so it's broken a little bit. Make video on data structures basic. Okay, good luck there. Generally, code forces blocks. I think are a better start. Uh, where is my timer? Here. So what did I click to? Hi timer. Oh, I no, I showed this. Uh, so, by the way, what you're seeing on the screen is kind of independent. My face is, of course, added on the top, but then this thing, the timer is from Windows, while the background is from Ubuntu, from Virtual Machine. Will there be a talking session today? Well, only now. So the first five minutes are some opportunity for you to ask questions if you have any. Yeah, long time, long time. Hi, Alexander. I've now regarding the chats. It used to be a case that Twitch chat uh, was I'm um, more on the topic. People ask questions about the algorithms and programs that's about what I'm doing versus on YouTube there were just spam comments often I'm not saying now that now there are any like that and today as an experiment I'm allowing chat on both tomorrow also as an experiment I will stream only to YouTube so no Twitch chat tomorrow not not at all and we'll see how it goes I don't think I will like maybe I will just keep double streaming long term to YouTube and Twitch but I 
if so, I will just again only maintain one chat on Twitch, I think. So likely the decision is between streaming only to YouTube or double streaming maybe where Twitch chat is the only one open. How much RAM do I have? I don't remember. Uh, 32 gigabytes, half of it allowed in the virtual machine. All right, A rectangle shrinking. We have a rectangle two by billion and some sub rectangles. You can change every rectangle to its subset, so to its sub rectangle. We need to maximize the area covered by new sets. Some polynomial DP should be easy. I tried fixing the colors in OneNote since yesterday, but it turns out that we, Microsoft did an update, an ugly update again. They are so bad at updating OneNote. They are they keep messing up the product. It's worse and worse. There is one feature that I'm using copy pasted from a version from 10 years ago. Uh, so it used to be possible to have key binds for different colors. Like I would just hit something on keyboard to get a different color. Now the only thing that I can do is hit, hit Alt 1 and then from here I can choose a color. Uh, which is obviously annoying. Okay. Um, so you have... Do I want to draw the main thing? Let's draw that. I will sometimes click Alt 2 because it used to work for choosing color blue and now, now Alt 1 stopped working. Thank you Microsoft, very cool. Good morning, I'm Aji. I'm, okay, let's do it like that. Here at least everything is visible. Uh, okay. If the initial a rectangle is like this. Why would I not want to keep it if it starts from the left? Also, I will add information about what I'm solving. Solving E. Mm. Okay, in this case, do I ever not want to leave the full thing? I don't want to do it if there is something else that intersects with that, and that's bad, but for every other thing, I will just start it here. So, if there is a double rectangle starting at the beginning, I will just take it. Uh, what next? If... Now, if there is something like that, this is a difficult choice. Hmm. Later we might have this thing. And then in blue it's difficult to make a choice between those two. If there is a blue like that and very long yellow, does that imply something? Like we can take both up to here, <coughs> but is it necessarily optimal? No, because this might be the situation. Blue, 
yellow, red, let's say, and this is very long, this is plus infinity. We might want to take this part, also this red part. Actually, if in yellow we can choose both, and in red we can only take the top. Now, why would I ever not want to take full single rectangles? Oh. I think we have we need a more complicated intersection. If you're a subset of a bigger rectangle, you might heard that. Do I do machine learning? No, I don't. I only do algorithms. I wonder if I can usually... Uh, when I have the problem statement open, I prefer to show that on the screen as well. Let's go full screen with a drawing. So on the left, we have something starting. As we said, if something is of double type, not necessarily we want to take it, right? So if there is a double thing, no, we always want to take the full thing. Okay. So let's say that there is a single thing here, single thing here, and there might be more stuff. Can I cover everything here? Well, green it seems intuitive that i will take the full white then i can take everything here i will take full yellow example from the problem statement also allows us to take everything that is covered there are no more drawings okay so let's create examples where we cannot cover everything Obviously, a very long thing might cause troubles because you might want to do things like at the beginning and at the end. But why would you want to cut it? Why would you want to do something in the middle? So is it true that whatever starts here we can just start taking it that's strange mm. recap of the problem statement is that we are given some rectangles on a grid two by billion and we need to choose sub rectangles of them so they wouldn't intersect and they would have the maximum possible total area why is it bad to take this 
if there is something of double type you can take the bottom if there is something like that you can take the full thing assuming that you count this rightmost part I'm really not able to construct a case where the answer is non-trivial. If something is very short, well, you might not want to take it, but it doesn't hurt. something here is longer we will just ignore the shorter thing or will we or I need to find a case where it hurts that something is so long In this situation, red is not necessary. I will just take blue completely. Am I misunderstanding something in the problem statement? I think I need to draw one of tests, something where the answer, well, we need to also reconstruct the answer, that might be ugly. Is it possible that the answer is always trivial in terms of the first number? Like this thing? Let's draw something. Let's draw maybe the last test. I think this has the biggest probability of being a counter test. Yes, my background is real. Let's see. Yeah, if I hit something incorrectly, okay, here we go. Stupid one note. Two three, two seven. Sorry, two six two seven. I'm redrawing the last test. One four, two five. One five. One nine. This is for now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Continuing one seven to ten. And one two one six. What's the total area covered? It's ten at the top. This is not ten. Ten at the top plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So seventeen. But the answer I recall is sixteen. So if I didn't make a mistake, this is a counter test. And what, we cannot take everything? I don't believe that. In yellow we take everything, in this yellow we take everything, and then we take all those three. Six plus eight plus three, 17. Why is the answer 16?
Again, I'm not understanding something correctly. In the chat I will mainly answer things related to the problem, otherwise it will take me forever to solve this. The value of epsilon not correct in the background? Yes, some, some values there are incorrect. Let's verify two six seven one four two five one five one nine one seven two ten one two one six. This is sixteen. This is okay. Uh, so this starts here not from one but from two. That was my misunderstanding. Okay, so maybe what maybe what is happening is that we always can cover everything i just need to construct it but so and while trying to always construct it i will realize if there is an issue with that okay i mean i can also analyze other tests here or i can implement reading the input iterating those things and just verifying the first number but this yeah other tests are trivial here do we have wrong answers in e do we have a lot of wrong answers Pretest 19, pretest 17. If it's not correct that the answer is simply you know, ever, the number of cells, then a lot of people failed on the same test. 15, 17, 19. Those are different tests. 15, I mean, 15 is the most common, but. It's not that common. Okay, so I think that the lemma is correct. Now, how will we do this? Whatever starts from the begi beginning we will start taking it. I just need to like draw 10 different cases and implement them all. Is that it? So if I keep taking the begin the, the, the start of something and now if there is this, I can just change it to the bottom thing. Generally, whenever I have a double type, because of the lemma that the answer is just like all cells can be covered, I can change that into this. Also, whenever I have this situation, sorry, I have whenever I have a situation where everything in anything intersects, I can remove the smaller thing. Or if I have this kind of situation, sorry, this kind of situation, I can the right thing decrease down to just this. Um, what is non-trivial? I think this is non-trivial. In this case, I will shorten the top thing. I will shorten it here. Can't we use greedy take the largest rectangle? It it would be inconvenient to implement, I think. I mean, it doesn't matter which rectangle is the largest. We want to cover all the cells. So why would largest be most important? Mm. 
Okay, let's draw a bunch of cases of things intersecting with each other and what I will do in each of those. So there is this case. Uh, okay, that one, this one. Those are intersections of like of height one. Then there can be, of course, same things for size two, like that. I can handle them the same way. But also there can be size one with size two of different types. Hmm. Okay, so do we go from left to right and like greedily say what we keep alive? Or do we do this shrinking of all the elements so they would stop intersecting? I think that we need to go from left to right. By the way, this seems to be an easy problem, just very you know, boring to, to solve, maybe. Unless I'm not seeing something. Maybe I should have expected that, but a lot of people didn't solve E quickly and I thought that it's a difficult problem because of that I switched to F. Let's go from left to right. There is this. If there is a double type thing, I'll just take it. If there is a single type thing, I also just start taking it. I think it cannot hurt. Well, uh, as long as I first prioritize the double thing. So if this, then take it. That's first thing. Then if we have this, then start taking it. It's OK. You can do the same thing here if there is another one. And now let's see what can happen on for column two. This was column one, column two. Now, this thing can end and then we can just consider like a new start. That's easy. But well, a new double thing can start. And then Well, I think two things are possible. And depending on the situation, we need to do a different thing. This might be the situation. And this might be the situation. And depending on which one, we will cut differently. In the right case, we will cut here. In the left case, we'll cut here. We need to prioritize for who reaches further, always among two possibilities. And similarly, if we are right now using something that is maybe double type, and then a new object starts and it's, it looks like that. When it starts, we shouldn't do nothing yet, but when the red one ends, this is where we will start the blue guy. Unless something even longer uh, appears. Maybe the following is true. At every point, we use whatever will reach furthest to the right. Uh, wait, I will ban somebody on YouTube. Sorry about the spam.
that's an interesting feature let me test this thing Brian asked what's the difference between boring and hard and hard or difficult usually means that it's difficult to come up with a solution or maybe it's like you get a rough idea but it's difficult to actually implement it because you don't know what to do you you need to think things through and the limitation doesn't come just from the number of cases if i told you to write with pen on paper all the numbers from run from one to thousand is it hard it's time consuming it's tedious i would say it's boring but it's not difficult you don't need to use your brain that much okay so the lemma is a cell for every cell both in top and bottom uh, rows cell belongs to an object a rectangle that reaches furthest in this row that's i think uh, that's i think what will cover all the cases and let me think so if the double thing started it doesn't if double thing started but it only reaches here it's okay if there is this thing that we prioritize that one yeah seems fine so we will do some kind of sweeping from left to right and all we will process new starts maybe like ends as well and for both top and bottom row we will keep track of what right now reaches the furthest uh, i guess that's the solution some sweep line algorithm now right this is what e can hide that because you see the problem test cases I'm switching from scan print to scene C out. I said that yesterday already. I will have a struct for rectangle. Do I want to use whatever they used here? I don't know yet. Let's handle that later. Every rectangle will have its ID, I believe, because as the output we need to say for every rectangle how much it shrank. Lemma doesn't work for top right here. Oh, you're right, you're right. The lemma doesn't work here. Thank you. it's not that easy shouldn't it index be enough for id oh yeah but i mean index is id so sadly this lemma is not correct and we need to prioritize the double rectangles in some way
Hmm. Let's call this case A and case B. And for now, ignore everything else. In case A, because we started the double rectangle somewhere, should I just say that we skip until it ends and then we do stuff? In case B, maybe this. Whenever a double structure starts, but it will finish before a longer guy finishes. Then I should just treat it as a single rectangle on the bottom in, in case of B. Uh, if there is an intersection, we check the box. Who has the biggest cell counts if it will keep its size and smaller one will shrink. I don't think it's smart looking at the number of cells because we don't maximize cells anymore. We want to cover everything. It's just about how to cut them. In particular, if you shrink some part of the drawing or you expand it, it shouldn't change anything. Also, I think that 20 seconds is usually slightly too short for highlighting messages. I will increase it. 30 seconds might be too long, but let's try that. I'm using this feature first time, highlighting messages in Twitch. Maybe just keep track of the longest reaching top thingy, longest reaching bottom thingy, and longest reaching double thingy. Mm. Yes, but also with information what we are using right now. Because depending on how they start, notice that situations A and B do not differ in terms of where they will end. Just because in, ca in case A, we started earlier with the double guy, uh, then we are using it consistently. So, Yeah, I believe that we will keep track of those longest reaching things, top, bottom, and both. But then what, some Boolean variables to say? And I bet that this can be implemented nicely without a lot of casework. But if a solution with analyzing 10 different cases is more, is, I don't know, kind of instant like you know that if you do a lot of casework that will give you a solution i usually don't like this kind of problems even if there is a nice solution at the end i'm trying to now come up with that nice solution A cell that belongs to the rectangle drawn first or has lowest index if it overlaps. I mean, indices shouldn't work. In some cases, we should look about what finishes where. And you cannot say that at the same time you prioritize what started first and what ends later or first. And those two cases at the bottom, they are showing that sometimes when things start, we need to look at how they will end, where they will end in order to decide where to cut. So you cannot look only at starts because of this thing. Also, you cannot look only at how it will end because of that thing. You need to consider both. Oh, 
when we cro cross a double thing, it's shorter than top thing. We don't use it to update the double thing. We update the bottom thing with it. I, I agree with that. But it will be one if among many. Can we change the problem? No, I'm, I want to practice this and few hard problems today. Uh, had something to systematically make less intersections. That was my idea as well to eliminate intersections, but then I switched to thinking we need to go from left to right. Jeroin, uh, I think that you got the better idea, but I will be consistent with mine, I think. But this seems to be a better one. If we follow the wrong lemma, in case A, the red rectangle will shrink right to the left. Uh, I'm not understanding that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this part we will think that we will think that this part belongs to blue, and that's like invalid. The the lemma thinks that it's okay for a red rectangle to be shrink to that. Did I get married? Yes, I did. Um. Okay, I will just keep track of longest top bottom thing. Possibly it will be the same item. <laughs> I'm just thinking about variables to use. So this lemma is wrong. This is wrong lemma. Competitive programming is just a face, yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, all of those will be rectangles and also current top and current bottom will I keep those five variables if the rectangles overlap the cell belongs to the better result. I mean, uh, anyway, we want to cover everything. So I, I don't know if we should say better result. I think I will go with those five variables and I will just make a bunch of ifs. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, let's let's go with those. I don't like that so solution particularly, but okay. So there will be rectangles for uh, for longest top and bottom. I will just make it an array of size two. There will be a rectangle for longest both. This is the double guy. And then there will be current also of size two without current both because this in particular can be both top and bottom. Uh, you cannot split double rectangles into two independent parts because you will do invalid things with them. So no, that's that's not possible. I need to, of course, initialize them to something like to, I don't know, rectangles zero, zero. Is this, I will just call it long. <laughs> okay, the long is not a big, let's call it big. Big both, big. Of zero is big of one is big both is current of zero is current of one is 
rectangle that will be filled with zeros. I still don't know what exactly I will do, so I'm not yet implementing struct, but this will be some kind of fake rectangle on the left. Then I want to do sweep line, so I will do stuff whenever something starts or finishes. I will have here events. And here I will put push events of two types. Now, what's event? Event will contain information about start end, the x coordinate certainly. And the idea of a rectangle. Let's sort the events. Now, if two things will start or end at the same position, I need to do something. If x is different than he x, then return that. Else return if there is one start and one end here, the start goes first. Whoops, wait, control shift removes that. How do I remove the previous word? That's so inconsistent. Control shift and arrow left marks a single word, but control shift and backspace removes a full line. I also think some shrinking is possible, but I'm happy enough with this method. Okay, so what does rectangle have? Uh, yeah, I still don't know. There are all the events, and we will do something very different depending on the case. Hey, Erika, please don't private the videos. Do I ever do that? have that rectangle and now it will become clear whether here I have arrays of size 2 or what. I need a bunch of ifs. For This will be easy to update. Current is not that easy. Current is the main logic. For big I will just say like if rect dot this will be convenient. Is top. Is top will be a function that says if it in particular has the top row. Uh, and right dot right. This will mean the right endpoint. If it's bigger than big of zero dot right. But does that? Yeah, in particular double guy can be uh, double guy can be here I think also this I will call big double 
if this then big of zero is rectangle current it won't be that easy now if reg dot is double that was easy now That's not a valid, no, this is a valid way. If I'm starting something of double type, when do I start using it in the top row? Only if this is now the biggest. Double thing I start using if it's the biggest in top row. I will write it down. I start using a double rectangle if and only if it's rightmost in top row. Because if something else f reaches further, then we should ignore that. Also, there will be similar logic, so I want to start using loops. And start using a single rectangle, if and only if what? Uh, if I'm not right most and I'm not using double guy in both column in both rows I think that's the logic I wonder if it also applies here Can I close the if and just here decide what is current based on what I have? I believe that's a better idea. So I will do this anyway. If So even it's not that I start, I just want to consider using big of i instead of current of i. That's what I want to do. And I want to apply this, this logic. So first it's this. If I'm not using double guy in both rows, if current of zero is equal to current of one, this is a special case where I'm using a double guy and if it still exists I don't want to stop using it period so this is a double guy and it's right still applies greater equal event dot x so it hasn't ended yet can I go with greater oh this is non trivial I will just have additional array
but please don't repeat messages unrelated to what I'm doing. I don't have that much time to talk about everything. Okay, this resolves that, I think. And otherwise, I just want to use the longest in both cases. So can I just say this? That easy? Is that that easy? I guess. I mean, so this is still not the output. I need to, you know, modify some stuff to be able to print it and now rectangle let's go with uh, let's go with values from the input just slightly more meaningful down right it also has id When I read, I pass the index and there are some const functions. Up is equal to one. Down is equal to two. I used equality operator just compare by indices should be good enough uh, here let's go with zero 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 minus one Index minus one, I think here is very important. Events, what are the events? They contain X, which is the first, the beginning. True, ID is just I. False I, okay. Events for sweep line are created. And I just need to test it, I mean, Let's print something. Will you dry run the code? Can understand. What is dry running? Like going through the code and talking about what it should do? Dry running code. Trace the value of variables. Oh no, in such a long code, it, it would take a very long time to do that. It makes sense in easy problems, not in something like that. So generally, if you're not following up, if not following up, if you're not following my logic here, likely it means that it's just this stream today will be too difficult for you. You can get back tomorrow, same time on YouTube, and I will start from easier problems. Two rectangles have different indices. I don't mind, I hope. That's a good idea. What if? Uh, I think that's fine. I can just imagine that they are shifted by epsilon, one of them. I think it's not an issue, but it's a very good question. No. At every x, I will just print the current.
This will not be very readable, but it should do a job for now. Here we go. Comparison doesn't mean irreflexive requirements. The comparator is messed up. Comparator needs to actually return false if they are different and something, something. Okay, mm, let's use GDB. Nope. Hundred nine. This index might be minus one. I guess. Okay. Why doesn't it print anything? something wrong with my local flex? Maybe event is empty. High is printed. And, oh, continue. Continue might be, might happen a lot of times. Okay, so always continue happened, which means that I'm not really doing a lot. Oh, of course. So I'm here checking if if that. I need to check that this is not minus one. In the initial situation, I can just ignore that. Okay, we count a lot. Uh, debug is some function from my templates. And here we go. At index two, after the first start, we still have, uh, we have zero, zero. That's like the first rectangle, the big guy. At index four, something changes. And we have two and one. This is two, this is one. So it got, um, those kind of inherited things, I believe. Oh, because this one finished. So first rectangle stops here, then the other ones get something, and eventually this one gets it. Okay, uh, I think it's okay. It's a very easy test, but it's fine. Now let's try to transform that into the output. Mm. I think I should check if the next event will have a different X. And if so, I will do something. No, that's not smart because i don't know if i will hit continue at the next event so no they, they, not a good idea mm, so what then instead how is code forces showing stream of mine uh, it's not a sponsoring thing 
but Code Forces has this feature implemented. Everybody with big enough experience in Code Forces can add a stream and it will be displayed on the right. For, for both of those guys, if they are alive right now, I want to like put some information there that hey you're starting there. Let's call it x0. So x0 is even dot x. If this is the end, then actually x0 plus plus. So this is where those guys start. And we can say starting from here, you are there. Top. And bottom. Let's verify again using the first thing. In the top, starting at in x equal to 2, rectangle 0 starts. Indexing in my program goes from 0, so it's shifted by 1 compared to this drawing. Starting from index 5, which is here, there is rectangle 2 at the top and 1 at the bottom, correct. At 8, which is here, it says that still at the top we have that guy. This is not true because it's he's not alive anymore, but we will count for that in some way later. It's okay. Like I can pretend that like, my program right now tries to use rectangles even if they ended, but that's fine. Mm. I don't accept requests right now for for particular streams. Sorry, I, I have a plan for what I will do tomorrow. Functionality of debug: it prints things in, with some formatting. No. Whenever I know that something starts, everything else ends. Should I do something whenever I change the current? I need something to populate the answer. Would be answer of size two by n initially filled with something I don't know minus one minus one for both columns for both rows for all n rectangles I will know what range it spreads and now I can say this. And if answer of i of current of i id is equal to minus one, x zero. Okay, this is because you are starting, and also I need to handle that somebody is ending. I believe. This will be overwritten in a moment, and your ID is not minus one. Then answer of you 
is dot second is equal x0 minus 1. You finished there. Also, there will be something going on with the last position. For now, I will put here 100, but this is, of course, to be fixed. And now, for every rectangle, I need to print like what range it takes. Mm, for now, it will be very bad format. I didn't define not equals operator, I only defined equality. And what do you want here? Alright, let's see. Rectangle 0. It takes nothing in the top, nothing in the bottom. That's wrong. Rectangle 1. In the top it takes everything from 3 to 9. That's wrong. Oh, this, this was a wrong test. Never mind. At the top, from 2 to 4, correct. At the bottom, 2 to 4, correct. Rectangle 1. This one at the bottom from 5 to 100. 100 needs to be fixed, but other than that, this is okay. Uh, 2 from 5 to 8, correct. And this one, nothing. This one from 9 to something. Okay. I've just swallowed a, a small fly or something like that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what's here? Uh, rectangles of I dot right. Okay. Now that's fixed. Let's remove this garbage. I need to also count the answer. That should be easy. And here the actual format is this. What do we print? Oh, zeros. Zeros is what I can print. If if I'm not using that, just print zero 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 zero. Not puts because this is print side. Zero zero. Zero zero and continue. Else, if How do I want to do it? This will be more convenient. I have variables for whether it belongs to the top and whether it belongs to the bottom. If both are false, Then print that. 
and continue if is top if I belong to is top then this is one otherwise two if I belong to the bottom row then this is two otherwise one and I will print uh, what's the order up left down right up left right down after of course finding left and right and that's a bad order down and right uh, this hack should work rectangles of i do no answer of zero i answer of one i dot first dot first if one value is minus one and the other one is not minus one then maximum will get rid of minus one what an ugly solution also i can make sure that if both are true let's make sure with an assert that the ranges are the same if assert fails that's something that i should investigate and that's something I should investigate. Does that work here though? 1518, that's suspicious. And 181, uh, and, and this is also something strange. Where am I? That's, I think, reasonable. When will I do interview streams? Not within the next two weeks. Maybe in late February I will be back to that. Yeah, Imię means something in Polish. Uh, I, I, will, I will tell you why. This part of templates I can explain. We have here a bunch of stuff that is supposed to be short, but also it does, cannot be any keywords or cannot collide with anything that I want to anyway use in code and sim, breeze, door, those are just garbage three letter things that are short and they don't have any meaning. Imię on the other hand means name in Polish and normally I prefer English variables but the thing is I use a word name in my variables and that shouldn't collide. So we use the Polish word instead of English so we could use normally English variable names. Okay, uh, so what's going on? The second element might become very, very small. Uh, somebody's calling me. resolved. Uh, so somewhere where I'm fixing the right, it's too short. Actually, let me look here. Does that make any sense? Five. It's this one. Of course, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, where am I overwriting? Second. Oh yeah, I index I no index current of i dot id. Here we go. Seems better. One nine one ten. Nine one ten. Uh, that's suspicious. No, that's correct. That's correct. Good. I don't want this. But what I want is also the count, which is total cells area or something. 
area is zero, print it after computing, and this will be <laughs> ugly, but if it doesn't work, I will replace that copy paste with a for loop of size two, uh, but I want to get this and here just say area plus equal right minus left plus one up down minus up plus one down is bigger right yeah and i don't want to check myself so print the output diff e ramon file in compared with out yeah, it's different uh, but maybe it's okay that it's different wait 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 why is it zero zero okay this is why but it's 16 versus 15 but the printed lines are they are not the same third line is different for third rectangle i'm saying that it's only spanning to here they are saying it's spanning until seven and my program is saying it's spanning until eight that's because somewhere i should use minus one i'm guessing I'm already am using that unless I need to minimize that with rectangles of that guy because maybe a rectangle finished a long time ago now I'm looking at something else that will overwrite it Dot second dot right not second is that better seems better let's repeat the comment from before there are differences but they might be not real issues and whenever this happens what you can do is you can submit in code forces because you don't get penalties for wrong answer on the first test whenever first test is not unique you can still submit that's more efficient okay problem solved i will summarize the solution then like maybe three minutes to answer your questions about stuff and then uh, i will move on to the next problem which is g so next problem here will be this one uh, but now solution summary i will not walk you through the code it was 200 lines and i'm sure that it can be done in a shorter way who did it fast here we go it's short i think there is still no official editorial so it's fine if somebody in the chat wants to say something about the solution you can you can describe that What's going on in the chat? Oh, something. I'm not sure. I see more messages in Twitch. Okay, th there is some delay between the two chats. This is this is why I'm confused. I think. Well, whatever. Uh, four zeros are displayed to are displayed whenever you don't want to use a rectangle. So summary of solution for E of my solution for E is that when I have those rectangles from the input, I I don't try to understand well how they are arranged. I I want to do sweep line from left to right 
for that for every rectangle I get the moment where it starts and where it ends where it starts where it ends and so on I will get two times n events I sort them from left to right if there is a tie I break it according to some rule like start at the same coordinate needs to be considered first and at any point like let's consider what happens when the sweep line is here at any point I want to know what is a thing that reaches furthest to the right in the top row which is in this case just this guy and what reaches furthest in the bottom row uh, in this case that's this one I have those two and also I have the third thing I believe and that's what reaches furthest in both like what's the double guy that reaches furthest and then what logic I apply most of the time in both first row and second row I just replace with whatever reaches the furthest so if so far I had something but now I have something that something started and it will go here I prefer that and I started it the only case when it doesn't happen the only case where something else happens is I'm already using a double guy in both rows so if earlier for some reason I decided that both in the top row and in the bottom row the same rectangle should be continued then I'm not al allowed to break it ever and I just keep waiting maybe here something new will be started like that a very long thing a very good one whatever it needs to wait and only when I get here to the end of the double rectangle I will look at whatever ends furthest to the right among things that are still active or they ever started already the same will happen automatically at the bottom it might happen by the way that this will be the same structure again like that and then again this special case will happen then there is some some logic to get the output to reconstruct the output because for every initial rectangle I need to say how I shrink it and I need to print that Uh, I see that s some there is some arguing in the chat oh, we have tourists in the chat hi tourist this is the tutorial for E okay seems valid always before showing stuff on the screen I take a look if it's for sure safe for work if Brit has height one then sure sort rectangles in the decreasing order of li right most covered cell in row one and row two that's kind of what i do it is a height two rectangle so we, you you have some logic for when the double rectangle only converts into a rectangle at the bottom or at the top otherwise consider all processed rectangles such that they will end on the right is that so No, they will end later than this one started so they intersect if something then remove rectangle J so this other rectangle if L of J. this means it's completely covered no this inequality is confusing you're not using here ri that's suspicious it 
intersects. Well, it's already processed, but process means it started. Maybe the combination of those three conditions, this, this and that, it means it removes. I, I'm assuming that this is supposed to mean that it will, it will finish before this double rectangle starts, uh, before the, the double rectangle ends. Otherwise, shrink rectangle J by setting this. Okay, that's reasonable. Oh, this is um, like looking in the other direction. Okay, okay. So if we shrink it to the left. And then I'm surprised that we are going in increasing order. But I get the gist of it, I think. Well, th th this uh, this solution is very different, of course. Like it uses priority queue. Mm. Like when I f first considered, maybe not first, but when I close to the beginning of a stream considered shrinking things when they intersect, I was aware that then I will need some data structures like a priority queue. So I don't want to analyze that in detail, this bottom part, but it seems reasonable. Uh, so, by the way, my feedback for this problem is uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, it, and it's not only because my solution turned out long and I spent a lot of time. I don't like problems where most people will just do this case work, and the thinking about it is not that interesting. F was better, certainly. What was D? It, D was also better. That though also much easier. Uh, yes, I'm only solving difficult problems today. Mm, so what, now I think G. And for G, if I'm not mistaken, I have a huge spoiler from somebody already. But I don't know the problem statement. Yeah, yeah I, so I saw a sentence that spoils a lot. What can you do? Can you please get by this gun, uh, by this gun, blah, ban this guy on YouTube? Who? Uh, okay, I'm looking. If you're talking about Naman, I don't know. If I see new messages, I will take a look. I don't want to scroll and read the full conversation. I will take a look later. Okay, G. Rooted binary tree. Call one of two colors for every node. Oh, I took hour and a half for that first problem. Well, that's a lot. Uh, I don't know. Naman, s stop posting things unnecessary to, uh, not unnecessary, unrelated to the stream. If something is white, it needs to have a blue neighbor. And if something is blue, it needs to have a white neighbor. In particular, if you do you know, bipartite matching, you will get that. You want small disbalance.
Okay, so not only for a given tree we need to say what's that uh, optimal value, the diff number, the difference between white and blue, but also we need to do it while the tree keeps growing. So after every new node, we need to say what is the answer. What? And then not only that, we need to print the solution for the final situation. I don't like that in this competition, in this conferences round, there were multiple problems with reconstructing the output. Usually that's not very interesting. Okay, then I will take a look at some tree like I know this one. The one two five three four. Then I will tell you all what spoiler I already know. I will not pretend that I don't know it. This is actually a very easy tree because. I can get a difference of one just by doing this and this is like perfectly balanced or whatever like you cannot do better but if we have this situation this is more interesting so you need to color everything white and blue for example this is not allowed because this guy at the top doesn't mm, it doesn't have a neighbor of a different color so not allowed. Those two, they need to have a different color. And now this cannot be white. Okay, so for such a case, which by the way, that's just a star. So this is equivalent to a star. And for a star, sadly, we need to color the middle nodes one color and everything else the other color. And here the difference will be two. The difference between white versus blue. We have two ways of doing that. It will be white and one blue in the middle or one white in the middle. <coughs> and this might matter if it's a bigger tree. If this is a smaller part of a bigger tree than something. Now if this is a smaller thing, so we have that situation. And now we have here somebody else and here other stuff we have we have those two possibilities of uh, where the difference will for sure be two there is no other way diff is two but we can choose in which direction and depending on that this top one will be white or blue let's say it's blue uh, then the number of uh, blue minus white is equal to two in this case um, obviously from this other subtree we will try to get more white than blue and this should kind of even out in total mm -hmm. and obviously the intuition should tell us that this cannot grow too big because the tree is only binary so we will always be able to even out things left versus right okay <laughs> now I'm, I told you stop uh. Uh. so the uh, spoiler I heard is this the answer is small I mean the difference or even more the answer can be non zero one only for a very small tree or very small subtree. If there are a lot of nodes, then we always will be able to get the balance of zero or one if the number of nodes is odd. Now, is it true that Is it true that the answer is 0 or 1 
if n is greater or equal than something. Can we say that? Because I didn't think about that spoiler so much. Can it happen that the answer is 2? I hope not. What does the sample show? Okay, I, I think the lemma should be okay. During a contest I would also guess so. And I would just assume that it's true. Uh, this value for sure can be smaller, I just don't know how small. So we need, for the first few elements, I will just do exponential solution. I will try all possibilities. And then the task boils down to, for the full tree, finding that final um, coloring. So the difference would be 0 or 1. So it's like boring DP on a tree. I'm guessing that every subtree balance will be at most, I don't know, three or so. So it's dp of node, color of that node, and the balance of the subtree. Node is obviously uh, from zero to n minus one, color is zero or one, white or blue. And subtree balance is from minus four to plus four. And this will be what Boolean? Just possible or not possible information. Then when you have two nodes, you will iterate all possibilities from both. And then you need to reconstruct that I guess I will repeat the same going down. Like saying, this was possible thanks to that situation. So I will run DFS down, always passing those arguments to say, yeah, this is what, what gave us the optimal answer at the top. Yeah, seems fine. I will implement it, but because, you know, if I'm out of shape, I want to practice. I also need to implement things like with a tree, but it's not an interesting problem, I think. Again, F was better. F was actually interesting. I wonder how important were test cases in this problem. It's a big letter, so it's not that there are a lot of submissions. And wouldn't this be okay enough with one test case per file? And I want to change indexing. With graphs, trees, stuff like that, sometimes I would prefer to leave indexing to be 1 through n because it's easier to debug. The input follows numbering from 1 to n. And then if the code uses 0 through n minus 1, what, deb what we print with debugs will not exactly match what we see in the input. That leads to some confusion. We... The DP, DFS. Okay, I will use global arrays for that. I usually do that. Or vectors of vectors. Let's do it old style. That's very ugly. You should not follow it. Vectors of vectors are far better. Uh, arrays are bad, but here we go. So, parent of everything. Oh, wait, there is a parent. 
So should I avoid DFS? Where is that spam? Interesting. If there is some message that is automatically detected by YouTube chat, I think it still gets Restream bot copies that into Twitch. That's bad. So how do I erase that message? It seems it's not that easy. Gupta, do you see a way to remove messages by another a moderator? I think I know what I can do. No. Well, too bad. So again, will I use recursion here or not, or for loops? What is easier? I need dp of like n, two colors, uh, 10 different balances. Mm. Okay, let's use global arrays. And then DFS as well is fine. Uh, I will comment on that. When graphs are given in form of parents smaller than i, uh, this is the superior form. I'm guessing that by it you mean for loops instead of recursion and stuff like that. Well, I can give you a counter argument. With DFS that I will use to reconstruct the solution, I want to pass values down. Recursion is better for that. With DFS, I will iterate for what my one child gave me, what the other child gave me, and I will just run those recursive functions for them both. With iteration, I need then another place to store those things. I'm aware that recursion is way slower, but here it only you know, multiplies O of N by some constant factor, so it doesn't matter at all. Recursion here will not slow the program down. It will not affect me getting accepted or time limit exceeded. So I wouldn't say superior. Recursion has its it has its advantages. Sometimes it's more convenient, and I think that this is such a case. But I agree that often with such input format, you should just, I mean, use for loops here because of that. Uh, Oh, and I will need to do this. Wouldn't it be enough to just require the final string? Mm, though I want children, I think I want children. This thing will compute the dp of a. I will, how will we do it? We will... Can I create a fake child that doesn't have anything? It would need a third color. I 
Also, this is boolean. For convenience, I think I will do that. And I will here say dp of I know, zero. Zero will be a fake node and it will have color free. And with balance of, of zero, that will be achievable. I'm here, I want to here use negative or positive values as this last dimension. There are ways to do it automatically, but it's not such a complicated DP that I want to use those better techniques. Uh, most of the time recursion is not necessary. I agree with that. Uh, all these DFS functions or lambdas just clutter the code so much. Mm. Yes, I guess. There are situations where one approach will be better than the other. So to children, do I always want to push this zero? First, for every child in children, run that. I wouldn't need to type this if this was just a for loop, obviously. Then, push back zero. This is the fake note. And now I can say that one child is C1, the other child is C2. By the way, I'm slowing the program down a lot here, because even for leaves they will iterate everything for children. But I prefer to do that for convenience. Maybe for debugging it will be worse. Difficult to say. Now, each of them will have a color. Yeah, but this color, this color, I don't like the idea of fake child. It's not really better. I will have ifs. Uh, dp of a color zero balance one is equal to true. Now, I iterate color of my ch my only child. I don't like how C1 can be interpreted as color or child. I will display your message, but I don't want to read. I want to continue coding. I code B. for every color of that guy. In the root, I will need to check if the root is satisfied. Oh, I see, it's more complicated than that. Not only I need to know what is color of, of this node, but I need to know if already it has a neighbor of a different color. Okay. Sat will mean satisfied already. This will be my color. If not satisfied and my color is the same as his color, then continue because that's not allowed. If that doesn't happen, then it's satisfied and it's good. 
and now we should say what should we say dp of a my color I will write down the definition here this is dp of note color satisfied and balance satisfied my different than color and the balance that's balance plus get my color This might go out of bounds. used variable that's suspicious oh yeah if this and dp of b color satisfied balance what i hate is that first i need to now implement the same thing for two children and second i need to reconstruct that so maybe already here I will not run a second DFS to redo re the reconstruction. I will here say like how we derive at that. Reconstruct. This is becoming very, very, very ugly. Else assert that the size is two, we have two children, and here comes the fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that this can be avoided, what I will do now, but. This is what programming is about. So I'm iterating state of the first child, state of the second child. Here you go. Two things connected. For reconstruction purposes, I'm here. I here need to say also B2. Call to sat to bal2. Beautiful. 
Okay, good that there weren't three children, because then I would need to copy paste again. What about ten children? No. First, I guess I can print the answer. How to automatically clean DP of I of stuff? There is a way of that, right? With some kind of size of or mem set. Can somebody in the chat tell me? If I am looking at a particular index I here, how do I clear all of that? So in a multi-dimensional array, how, how can I put how can I clear all the cells with the first dimension equal to something? This thing is bad, you think? Oh. I guess you can format it differently. We can put everything in one line. I think that Python's approach with indentation is very smart. I have two separate functions because I will run one of them multiple times for testing purposes just to detect the answer. I think I already have enough stuff to print those values 0, 1, 2 to the output. And the children I don't want to always clear. So here after every step, I want to dfsdp of i, of course, to do, don't do it for i greater or equal 10 or something, and clean dp for i. But here, what am I doing here? Iterate things for the root. Satisfied needs to be one. How do I initialize? Yeah, zero, good. And for every balance, if dp of one call sat bal is true then this is a possible answer. Here you go, banned from the chat. Okay, line eighty seven.
141. Hundred fourteen. That's a lot of mistakes. Beautiful. <laughs> Almost there. One, one, infinity, infinity, infinity. What is the problem statement? Uh, you can search for the competition from the title and I can send it, I guess. How do I send to both? Will this work? Yep, it got sent to both YouTube and Twitch. All right. I guess I will just read the code. It was easy here to make mistakes. Maybe I will spot some. See where I use valid balance and whether always it's a reasonable thing to do. Seems so. How do I stop that? my color whether it's satisfied and the balance okay if one child get that child iterate its color whether it was satisfied already the balance this also should be zero to two bell this shouldn't have that if new balance is okay this is balance of his okay what about there make this nicer actually i'm not using reconstruction yet but i will eventually this seems slightly better and the parity at least is okay Interesting that few times in a row it said that it's impossible. That's suspicious. 
then analyze that I guess so okay copy this to another input open that other input decrease it to size four. <coughs> and we just have this this will be a tree of size four and the last value here is bad so also yeah why is it four well it should be two let's draw that tree this is zero not zero one one two three four that's the tree I wonder if I will do age today. Two hours already. Yes, those. So whenever I do streams where I solve problems that are not trivial, it's very difficult to make them a fixed amount of time, say ninety minutes or two hours. That was the worst for ad coder streams. Maybe one day I will get back to those, but for ad coder streams. Maybe if I start a problem, it will take three hours. Uh, okay, I think I'm able to say when exactly this should be possible. For zero, it's minus one. so for color zero for satisfied equal to color zero satisfied equal to zero this balance will be minus one same thing here for zero zero minus one then here it's two color is one satisfied is one and balance is minus one minus one but plus one which is minus one and here one oh and i didn't check for the root i checked for the root one color is zero satisfied is one and balance is minus two those should be things that are uh, reachable so when I print the answer, three zero zero minus one, four zero zero minus one, two one one minus one. The last dimension is slightly different because I'm using negative indices. And by default, that's not allowed. I could use something like a map, but then it slows the program down a lot. True, true, false. So for this guy, it didn't happen. So I'm guessing that the issue is here. We have our two children. We iterate. we should use pascal and we can use python or c++ with dictionaries but i guess we can use pascal as well i don't know about rust maybe rust has better arrays This is wrong. I should say minus balance. This, those things are artificially increased by balance. And this is still wrong. And the, the answer changed, but it changed incorrectly to zero.
let's print stuff. When I'm at node 2, when my color is 1, I can get new balance of 5 or 3, which is plus 1 or minus 1. This is good, mostly. When my color is 1, my new balance will be 1. That's not good. Let's see it, my children. One has balance 3 and the other has balance 5. No, that's impossible. My children will have the same balances because they must have the same color. Do they have the same color? I'm using color 2 instead of color 1 somewhere. Maybe not. and one. Am I understanding the test correctly? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Python works with negative indices. You mean for ar for arrays slash lists? <laughs> I guess in Python for an array of size 10 that I created this way, yes, it would work. I need to ban somebody again on YouTube. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah, if if I am to stream on YouTube with chat turned on, then certainly I also need moderators there. I guess that's not such a big deal. Okay, how did it happen? Let's also print. Maybe let's do it like that. B set color no that the different order color set very satisfied balance B2 color set to and balance two and also for myself I print my color and I print New sets and new balance. That's actually everything. This is equal to, this is not equal to. Of course, that's bad. Uh, yeah. Now it should be fine. Okay, answer is correct. Let's make it faster. And I believe that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Now what? For big indices, I don't want to do it, so if i is greater or equal than something, then just print the parity. For now, let's just say this. Th that's not correct, but let's try. One, zero, one. 
Okay. Obviously, that's not fully correct. It's something I don't know. Eight. And need to here run it one last time and reconstruct with DFS or not. Yes, with DFS. Rec here doesn't stand for recursion, it stands for reconstruction. Okay, I will. I will sadly copy this. We get the final answer, but also what I want is that final optimal state. And optimal state is one color satisfied balance. This will always get the full vector, let's say. And I need to look up at the reconstruct of I will just write it like that, I guess. <coughs> okay. I think that should work and we get the color so here let's say we are passing a string and answer of a minus one is equal to if depending on state of one it's either white or blue I always, when I have a string, I always first fill it with question marks, then it's clear when we print the output if something was never hit. What do you want now? Answer already exists. Sure, S. Here we go, question marks. It would be very bad here to, by default, fill it with whites or something. Uh, what about state with two children? This thing, what I'm doing here, it can take first quadruple of elements and second quadruple of elements. This can handle any number of children. A reference for vector state, that's not necessary because it's vector size four or something. If something is small, you don't, it doesn't matter much if you pass it with reference. Anyway, I'm creating it here, so I think it wouldn't even compile right now with reference because it doesn't exist. Okay, does that work for the second test? Yes, it does. And for the first one, it doesn't. Why? Well, why? Because something is wrong. What is wrong? This 
gets run only for a single guy, so what? Reconstruct was never filled? Yeah, V is empty. One, zero, satisfied, three. Sure, but if something is true, oh, I think I know the issue. When we compute answer, do we even check for DP? Well, yes, we do. If dp is turned to true, then the reconstruct cannot be empty unless it's something with no children. Failed. But otherwise, when I change, this is different. Okay. I have two buttons to compile and one of them compiles with a flag that erases debug. It's like production versus debug flag. Yep, it works here. I could Maybe during a contest I would think for a few more minutes about like some limits, uh, like whoever eight is correct. I would maybe generate a max test to see if how fast it is. A random max test should be good enough. Okay, accepted. Ooh, hooray! So what? I will now take a look at H. I guess. Yeah. Uh, why not? I will take a look here and that's it. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. How fast it took people in the top. People in the top solved the first G problems, whatever G is. Actually, they solved H1 before G. Oh, H1 is worth a lot of points. So H1 might be easier than something here. But two hours should be enough to solve those six. It took me more than four hours. I'm not very proud of that. So G alone, how much time should it take? 50 minutes is reasonable. It's half an hour is possible. Then, then for me, one hour should be possible and I did it in one hour, so that's fine. What took me too much time was E, because E I was doing for more than an hour. My time for G was good enough. Okay, then I, I also remember that A, B, C, D I was very fast with. So E took me like one hour too much. And F, I guess also. F was a bit random because I spent a lot of time looking at code and that was slower because of the string. So with E and F, I was very sl slow. With A, B, C, D, G, I was okay. Do I think my weakness is speed? I mean, no. Speed is everything. If I'm given 10 hours to solve those problems, I will most likely solve them. For everybody, the weakness is speed maybe sometimes capped by knowledge as well. Of course, if I was 10 times faster, I would win most competitions. But whether speed is important is a very I don't know, vague question or a simplified one. Let's read H. And after reading, I will decide whether to solve it or not. We 
have a rectangle h by w every cell is 0 or 1 some windows might be broken and the light there is always off there are at most two such windows parallel translation so if we display some message it is equivalent to something else whilst we shift okay looks the, the statement seems okay i'm not what's the word for that I don't want to vomit after reading the problem. I don't, I cannot remember a proper adjective describing that. Okay, so there is a 2D grid. Some, how do I, okay. maybe a particular window is completely broken, and now I can, I need to count shapes, so like bit masks, a subset of uh, lights should be on. But if in another version, the same subset of windows is on, just shifted, it doesn't count as a separate thing. So clearly what matters is a bounding box. And for every, for every shape, I only want to count it once. Normally we would say that it should be counted when it hits the top left corner. So when it hits both the top row and the leftmost column. So this particular pattern should be counted when for, for that. The problem would, if not for broken windows, the problem would boil down to count sets of cells such that we choose at least one cell in the first row and at least one cell in the first column but possibly such a set of cells will include a broken window or two broken windows and if so we need to count its shift of some kind H, W are small, so I can iterate that. Let, let's assume that this window is broken and also I know, one more here is broken. Then we need to say what and uh, I iterate that this is that for such bounding box how many ways there are to choose a subset of cells so that at least one shift would be valid meaning it wouldn't include any broken windows that seems to be like I don't know a two set or something uh, I'm lacking a proper interpretation. So 
So for this bounding box, nine by nine, two, three by three. For this shift, this is a bad cell. Now, if we shift it down by one, then this pair is bad, meaning there exists a shift of this three by three bounding box such that those two cells are broken. If I shift even once down, so it will be here, then we will get this situation and so on. Now I will get a bunch of such pairs and stuff. So on. So I will get this and so on. In general, I believe it's just a grid with a bunch of pairs. They are pretty regular. Like always the pairs will have the same shift. And sometimes that. And I want to count subsets such that this subset is it doesn't have intersection with at least one of those red patterns that f show where are forbidden things. If so, it seems easy. And I'm guessing that H2 has bigger constraints for HW. Uh, okay. I don't know how much more difficult this is, but I think I can just focus on that. So I will iterate that bounding box. I will get a bunch of shapes. They are all exclusive. Not necessarily, but if we can one intersect with the other like that? Yes, it can. But then it will be very regular. Okay, so I ha I have an information that it's not it cannot be true that both though that any of those windows is taken. How should I think about it? Okay. Let's think about places that should be on. Uh, sorry, places that should be off. So which cells will not contain the light? And then the, those red pairs, they turn into something like this. Both those cells need to be taken or both those cells need to be taken or both those cells need to be taken or this cell needs to be taken or both those cells need to be taken or both those cells need to be taken. And we will get those regular patterns or single cells. Whenever there is a single cell here, it will then not be included in such a crazy pattern. When it's here at the end, there is something special. Okay, if I have this, so those need to be taken, taken meaning there shouldn't be any light there. I saw a message in the chat and I heavily misunderstood it. I the I'm 1365. I first tried to understand as some kind of date because I think because six 365 is the number of days in a year. So subconsciously I started thinking about like dates, numbers of days, and I thought that this person is saying either that they are 13 years old and something, or that maybe they are, their age is equal to 1365 days. Then I understood that that's rating. And I don't have particular advice for that rating somewhere I wrote down 
general advice for how to practice, but that's it. It's funny how sometimes you can misunderstand stuff. Okay, so uh, okay, those two needs to be taken, or those two, or those two, and so on. And that can be done with dp, but also with a formula, right? Let's focus on the probability. Mm. Now you see, I'm not alone. Uh, so I'm something has a, some some meaning in English, and but of course it's perfectly fine. I'm two thousand six hundred makes sense in context of code forces. Is this stream coming after a very long time? Yesterday was my first stream after almost a year, so today is the second one. But tomorrow will be another one. We need to count binary strings of length 4, where at least two consecutive things are ones. This could be some Fibonacci number. I don't know, I will just write that with dp. Okay, so we will have those patterns, sometimes also with information that it's enough that if this is taken. And then we should, I think, cut it. If a cell belongs to a pair but also to a single cell, it's we should just include it in the single cell. For many people it was hard to stream for a long time, maybe. You know, for everybody in the East, like Russia and Ukraine, everything got more difficult because of the war. It didn't really affect me, so I'm not some kind of victim here. It was independent. But yeah, you know, not everybody spends the same amount of time now on competitive programming as a year ago. Alterator. Good question. Are you doing more streams? You did some very high quality stuff in the free blue one brown format, right? Do I remember correctly? Cool to highlight the comments you're answering. I also think so. I like that feature a lot. It's only possible on Twitch, so if I decide to stream on YouTube, you won't get that. But we'll see. Right. I wanted to hide that. Why was it? Oh, I see. I'm clicking something that refreshes the message instead of closing. This should close. Here we go. I'm learning. Mm. Okay. So once again, the summary. We're given that rectangle with two broken places. I will iterate. Oh, yeah, I, I know what I didn't think about. I will iterate what's I will do that, but may, maybe it can be avoided. I will iterate what's the bounding box. Okay, what's the bounding box of lights that will be on? And I will consider all, all its shifts. For every shift, bad example. Here. For every shift, there is some relative positions of those at most two broken windows. Of course, the bounding box needs to fit completely within the given rectangle. And don't really have time to that. Yeah, I, I had this in some way, of course, different way, a similar situation. Text format content is, by the way, also very important. For high-level algorithms, text format, I think, is superior. I prefer to do video format. It's in some way easier, but text format, if 
if I had the choice of only having text articles versus only having videos for various difficult algorithms, I would prefer text. Okay, so we consider everything like that. For every position, we will get this relative position of two broken windows, and we have a requirement. And we have a requirement that both those cells cannot be used. So let's consider a Okay, so both those cells cannot be used. Let's say that this means both they both need to be zero. But then I consider a different you know, dif different placement and I will get a different here condition like oh now maybe do both those cells cannot be zero. Uh, so I have a bunch of such conditions in form of pairs or single cells uh, with requirement this must be zero. Also there is a requirement that my first column, first row, last column, last row, there should be something there, at least one element. Same thing here, same thing here, and there. For those borders, because I'm iterating bounding box, what's, what is in bounding box? Uh, so cells at the borders are special. Now those pairs, they will possibly form chains, longer chains, and they might belong to borders. Now, how do we implement that? I think that it will be dp of two by two by two by two, representing whether or not I used at least a single one in all of those. And then I will iterate all those cells in some order. To whenever I consider a cell like this one, I will also see to what chain it belongs. I will mark all of them as visited. I will do some maybe smaller temporary DP here to say what is the number of ways to fill those cells and how it modifies that. So this can be done. Articulation point problem solving, but there are a lot of materials on, on articulation point. I think it's too common of an algorithm. Also, it's not that common in competitive programming. Okay, this seems easier than the previous problem. Is it really easier? I don't know. It's similar. Is it the third DP in a row? I guess E depending on a solution is DP or not. The intended solution is not really DP. But for me, this is DP, this is DP, this is DP, and this is DP. So it's four dynamic programming problems in a row. For me, usually that's good. I like I like dynamic programming, competitive programming too. But uh, I misspoke. So what we're implementing this day? Sure, I will. Let's do that. Only easy version though. I don't want to bother with the other one. I wonder if ever, like I see here some conversation in the chat, uh, but I wonder like if all, hmm. 
Like if sometimes I even shouldn't highlight some message. Like if there is a conversation, say, about the war and Ukraine, so it's more personal stuff for somebody, still public enough that they are sharing in the chat. Is it in some reason bad that I would highlight it on the screen? I don't know. I guess if I'm answering that, if I'm talking about it, then I, it's okay if I highlight. But already sometimes during this stream, I highlighted a message without reading it properly first. That's something to think about. Test cases. Did this problem require test cases? Yes. Test cases aren't that bad if you think about it. But I always, in my problems, I don't remember the last time when I created a problem, but I don't use test cases if they are not necessary. Am I looking for moderators? No, and certainly not people that I don't know and uh, who don't do competitive programming. That's generally bad, but do I want to use uppercase here? No, lower and uppercase W is too similar. How, how do I want to call the bounding box size? X and Y? I'm not sure. I have a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to highlight a comment if it is addressed to you or you answer it. If people are just talking in the chat to each other, probably doesn't make sense to do so. Mm. Yeah. So, in particular, if it is regarding solution to a problem I'm doing, even if I don't have time to read it, I guess it's fine. I'm looking for a girlfriend, you're saying. Who is spamming so much on YouTube? Stephen, stop repeating things about articulation points. I'm just thinking about the format here. Maybe I will decide in a moment to do read the input. Then iterate to think. I know BW. It will be box width. GF is a generating function, of course. Of course. Then I wonder what is a wife? What that stands for? For every start, right? H minus BH plus one. This will be top left corner of the bounding box. And then I need to get coordinates of those things from the input. How do, do I want to represent this as a graph or what? 
I will have here certainly a vector of pairs. This will be a single pair, possibly a single object. Sometimes this will be of size one. And I will just have a set or a vector of that. Hmm. For now, let's say a vector. I will call it shapes. Hmm. No, th th those are possible pairs or singles that are required to be all zero. If any of them is all zero, it's good. I hope that those are numbered the same way as HW, row column, one H, okay. This is good. V is a vector with cells that are inside the bounding box. If it's zero, it means there is a bounding box that doesn't include anything. And that's special, but I think it still should be included. I guess it will be empty, then it's easy. And now I'm tempted to do the brute force just to see if my current code works. What's the input format? HW. For most of this exponential solution should be fast enough. Uh, just one test is too big. I want to iterate all possible subsets and see if they satisfy at least one thing here. If so, I increase the answer by something. Then maybe I will not implement the full thing. I don't know. But let's do that. Why not? Practicing implementation is fine. So, size is BW times BH. This is number of cells in the bounding box for everything if size is greater than 20 return because i don't want to process that test skip I iterated all possible submasks of this bounding box. What now? I need to verify if at least one shape is satisfied. Satisfied means everything here is not on. need to verify if 
this is true for the first column, first row, and so on. If I should say that for each of them, at least one needs to happen. Oops. For everything. Here, if not any, then continue. I think I'm done. I just wanted to quickly do it. It's not interesting anyway. Just checking for a grid if it satisfies some basic conditions like anything in the first row needs to be on. Uh, and is shadowed. That's fine. Anything else? That's fine. At the end it would be good to print the answer. infinite loop or just slow this thing doesn't flash the output right first thing I will compile it without the debugs and not correct always not always but around twice too big I'm guessing now that it counted all the possibilities and that it something is not checked properly. One by three, zero. I can, I think for every bounding box, I can start answer at zero and here with debug print how many possibilities I found. One by one is one, makes sense. One by two, three. That's not correct because I want something to be in the first column and in the first row. So I'm guessing this is wrong. For every column, yeah, this is wrong. This is better. Now let's not reset the answer and let's see if this works. Forty-four, nine, five, something, six, eight. Yep, this is okay. I'm just skip the big test. Can people from other countries participate in algorithmic engagements? I don't think so. So it's that big Polish competition in one week and I think you need to be a citizen or you need to live in Poland a lot of times. The rules say something about it. So I'm sure that the rules allow people from 
like and it's it's not only because of the war for multiple years already some people from the east they study in poland and they usually are allowed to participate so you don't need to be a citizen of poland but you need to at least live in poland or be polish so no you cannot participate now, now that the ugly dp Do I want to do it? I don't have anything else to do today. So I will do it. I will do the fourth DP. Am I happy with that? I don't know. So maybe I will now tell everybody what I need to uh, do again, because now we don't need to know the original problem anymore. We have a small grid, like 40 by 40 or so, with few, and there are some sets, there might be here pairs of cells, like this cell with this one, and also this one with this one or a single cell and here's what I need to do I need to count ways to put ones and zeros in this grid so that uh, first like um, first column contains at least one digit one the same for last column also first row last row but also there is at least one red shape or pair single something uh, with only zeros meaning like if you put zero here and zero here it's okay the red shape is satisfied and that's it at least one red shape needs to be satisfied if this is one zero then and this is also one one and this is also one then this is bad that's not correct so there is the, those four conditions about first column last column first row last row and then at least one red shape needs to be like that sadly red shapes aren't necessarily disjoint and that makes things more difficult because if there is this shape and also this shape they are not so independent and we need to kind of consider them together luckily the most complicated way they can intersect is that one can be like can follow the other they always go in the same direction so it's not a complicated graph of connections after that the most complicated thing is this and that's it uh, so I will treat this as a graph and I will say that this is a path and for such a path I will do something the last thing in such a path so this one or this one it might also be a single cell with information that it's also enough if this is zero and then I will just cut that. Those are both zeros, but also we win if this is zero. Yeah. So if this exists as a single thing, then I will cut here. Then I will be, this will no longer happen. Actually, I can just verify that here. misclick if something is just a single cell that single insert v it's called singles 
and for everything in shapes if its size is 2 and singles contains its first element or singles contains the second element then skip that only otherwise shapes to push back I got rid of pairs that include a single. Wrong type. Still wrong type. I am here guessing a little bit instead of thinking. Oh, good. Let's see if the answers are still correct. Okay, cool. Now I claim that those will be only paths, so pairs in a row, or singles. What now? Now the DP. If there is anything here inserted that is empty, then I need to like what erase everything else. I have that 2D grid for each thing. If it's not yet visited, I will see if it's a single. I will also see if it's beginning of a path. If so, I will traverse it with DFS or BFS. And I will do something for every next cell. I'd also need something like this in DP of 2222. Every dimension it will stand for like first row, first column, last row, last column, whether they are satisfied or not. Okay, I need to fill that with zeros first. Well, dp of zero, 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 zero is one. This means nothing is hit. At the end, I need to say this. Did I copy that? Yeah, so I can hear erase. K is taken. Maybe one day I should really learn Memset. Yes, Grandmaster like in chess. What's the mod? This is the mod value.
now the fun part feeling this I keep misclicking I need to do something with that there are a few cases if singles count vector with pairs where the only pair is simply row column else if I guess do the same for doubles is it possible that something doesn't belong at all yes I think so This will contain cells that belong to any pair. This is confusing, but it's a fix. I mean, doubles should here contain pairs rather than vectors of pairs, but whatever. Mem said dp0 size of dp. Okay, thank you. I will actually replace that. And I will try to remember mem set dp0 size of dp. And I understand that this is a byte that will be copied a lot of times. Okay. Hey, singles is the easiest. We need to wait. <laughs> there is a fourth dimension, five, fifth dimension. We need to say that at least one shape is satisfied, right? So this is that fifth dimension. Okay. Well, Here you go. And now, when we are looking at a single, we need to consider putting here zero or putting here one. And we need to apply that here. If there is something belonging to, to nothing, that's also fine. It will just not affect any of those. Also, to do handle a case of a shape with nothing because then like you need to remove everything else maybe then we will change that to one yeah that's a good idea empty shape then what okay that's I think done And what left is this. First and third case are very similar. If something belongs to a single, it will modify the fifth dimension, but that's really it. Now, how do I resolve, how do I want to resolve that? 
maybe it will be six dimension why not five and six is the same Hmm. Yeah, sure. Five dimensions is very little. Let's go with six. It will be DP of column zero, column last, or maybe row, row zero, row last, column zero, column last, uh, red shapes and temporary thing that we're using while moving now i shouldn't worry about this at the end so i think this will be zero or maybe plus one and one this last thing I will use while moving through a path. It will denote state of the previous thing to know if I have two consecutive zeros. Maybe then I wouldn't even need singles and doubles done separately. But whatever now. Maybe I can use that. Okay, path. If singles, path, push, back. If doubles, then I need to, for this cell, find the other cell that is not yet visited and add it to the path. For that, whenever I see a pair, hmm, V of zero, that's a pair, I hope so. Order of is pushback p order of for every cell i want to remember neighbors i want to remember other cells with what it is a pair so this is like that let's call it edges 50 by 50 good enough for this problem BH. Now, yeah, no. While true, let's try to find another pair that wasn't yet visited and is neighbors with this guy. For everything in edges of P, if not visited. Q is that guy. And if it's not minus one, minus one, then P is Q. Mm -hmm. 
and now I need to handle a case. What do you want? Handle a case of path empty. Path size equal to one and path size greater or equal than two. Oh, and in this case, I assume that path size is at least two. Which is not true sometimes because I'm not inserting anything into a path. Okay, now this is a case where it doesn't belong to singles, this is singles and this is a path. Everything I actually want to do with the same logic. I just no, don't yet know how. Uh, reserve edges, no, it's not a bottleneck. At least I don't think so. It's like, what, 40, 40 to the fourth power at most, and I will push back twice. Yeah, the reserve would help, but I do other things like modulo, so it's not a place. Also, I will highlight. Uh, it's not. It's not a place where I should optimize. There is that saying in programming: uh, preliminary optimization is the root of all evil, or something like that, and it applies in competitive programming. Don't make something faster if it's not necessary. If you have two equally difficult ways of doing something, then sure, choose, choose the faster one. Can I copy the content of one array to the other? What do I want to do now? For everything in that path, I want to move dp to new dp. This is becoming worse and worse. I don't know if I want to finish. Premature, not preliminary. Yeah, thank you. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. And here for everything, so that's row zero, row last, nine will just denote the last, column zero, column last and for information whether any red there were any shape is satisfied and previous this means just whether the what was the value of the previous cell from here dp of r0 r9 c0 c9 as previous i want to move to a new state new dp of something and this new dp state will be just difficult to get mem copy okay cool i think i will use that oh R0, the first row. P first is equal zero. R9, that's either R9 or P first is equal PH minus one. C0, that's so the new state of C0. Either C0 or P second equals zero. Last column. 
either last column was already hit or it's hit now. S. Oh, I see. I need to iterate over the new value that I'm putting. So maybe I will first say this. Mm, no. If I'm using, wait, zero or one? One. If I'm using one and we are in the proper row or column, then we hit the condition. S, any shape. Usually for a path that's either already this was satisfied or previous is equal to zero and I'm equal to zero. And what else is there? Previous, that's just me. New DP of this, that, this, that, this, that. Increase by By that. Adding modulo mod is done. A beautiful line ending at character hundred forty. I will say that a second time today. This is what programming is about, or competitive programming. For sure this is correct. And now, now what? Now the mem copy. Like that, I think. <sighs> and I want to do it kind of always, just doing something special if size is one or zero. So also if path empty, path anyway, I want to push back row colon it will just be special so what happens for empty oh but that's handled already right Yeah, that's handled. No. Yes. That's something else. This means that a cell doesn't belong to anything, so it just doesn't affect things. Okay, we need to do this. And this is a variable that I want to use. Okay, this makes sense. And possibly after being done with everything from a path, I need to do some changes to DP depending on that. Also, also for the first cell, 
Where is that? The first cell should, I think, assume that previous is one. And let's path size is one. This works no matter what. This works no matter what. It's just about s. Okay. If path size is equal zero, if path size is equal to one. Now, if it's the first in a longer path, if it's a first in a longer path, then here nothing can happen. Okay. And that's it. Well, it didn't work. It did not work. Why? How do I debug it? Again, 200 lines of code. I'm assuming you passed the arguments to MCP. I incorrectly destination and source. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Whoa. This works. Amazing. Let's create a max test. 40, 40, 2, 17, 30. I don't know. I don't know what here is an actual max test, but let's go with this. It was compiled with debug flags. And is that an invalid test? K, case, no, case here. Yeah, that's bad. Hmm, do I have anything that relies on array sizes? Join back to see 200 lines of code. That's not unusual today. Did, did I have it even one solution today with shorter code? I'm running now with debug flags because if there is some runtime error, I will get information about it. But this is, it could be way worse now, because I think it, actually I didn't check exactly. Yeah. It works for the sample test, doesn't work here. So 
So So that's that's the easier part. Should be easy to debug. Can do that. Come on. I, I know what I want to do. I will do the fast version but with local flag so I would get the debug output. Path is ten twenty nine. Zero nineteen, and let's print neighbors of zero nineteen, then twenty nine. Is it possible that it belongs to both doubles and singles? Oh, I'm removing some stuff, but it's still in doubles. Okay, okay. Uh, but it's bad that the sample test doesn't have a situation where a single belongs to double as well. I'm surprised. Or maybe there was something else going on. I don't know. What's this? Still works. Works. Okay. Uh, back to what I wanted to check, which is the time. 400 milliseconds. Oh, but that's the already the worst case. Let's submit this thing. Uh, well, I know that the sample test is weak. It, it didn't contain this single versus double thing. I got an incorrect answer by 100. My answer is too low. Uh, I think, uh, I, I suspect that something is wrong with that logic that I was just changing because it didn't happen for the sample test. Nothing changed there. So let's read that again.
Hmm. Well, Azar didn't fail now. Come on, let's de debug this and go to sleep. And it's like two hours more before I go to sleep, but I don't want to sol keep solving this problem. Also, this is dangerous, possibly. Yeah, I remember that yesterday there was something I was supposed to investigate. What time there is now in Poland? You can check online. It's almost 9 p.m. Let's make sure. Does that happen? No, this happens in the sample test. Apparently, it's not that important. And same for edges. Did the answer change? No. That's bad. But maybe, maybe. I will submit, submit again. That was so it didn't change for that test. Okay, maybe we need a big test where there is a row of smaller thingies, like two windows must be close to each other. I wonder. So I s I'm guessing that if I do something like this five, six, seven, ten, now there should be a different answer. This is answer number one. No, that's not it. I don't know. Whatever. Solved is solved. This is what I wanted. Accepted. So I solved everything but the last one. I'm not interested in solving this one. I believe that this can be done. Th those things they have patterns. So we can for sure come up with formulas. I don't know. I don't want to do it. I'm happy enough. So in two streams, in what what's that? Six hours total. I solved things that people solved in. Three hours. I guess that's good enough. Problems. Where is my status? My submissions. Here we go. H1 took me hour and 15 minutes. Let's say an hour because I was talking with the chat. I was doing some other things an hour well people did it in half an hour maybe they didn't have six dimensions only four dimensions but but there is a mask here so it's actually the same Is this code so bad? Oh, maybe I'm just slow. Okay, now let me read the chat for a moment and then the stream will be over. Uh, what's in store for tomorrow? Goodbye round. 
which is here, this one. It should be slightly easier. It was two hours and 30 minutes. I was going tomorrow to try streaming to YouTube only and I will see how that goes. I'm wondering what will be the quality of chat in particular because people from Twitch will be forced to migrate to YouTube if they want to comment and the number of views. I will compare that to the current scenario. Of course, considering the fact that maybe like long term it would be different. Uh, so it will be a single time experiment to verify that maybe I don't need to stream to both platforms, which of course takes a little bit more time. And sometimes there are for sure situations where maybe I would stream if it was easier to start. But right now for me, starting a stream requires setting something up on YouTube and Twitch and you know combining that. So also using cast or restring. Also chat disappears later. So we'll see tomorrow. The tomorrow will be this thing. If you want to watch me tomorrow, consider before the stream solving problems from Goodbye 2022. Uh, the stream will be then more educational for you. Maybe also this Thursday morning, which is in three days, I will do some stream, but I don't know, haven't decided yet. Isn't Twitch less messier? But here's the thing. It would be nice to stream to one platform. Let me use my feature. It would be nice to stream to one platform, but later I want to allow people to watch if they missed it. And YouTube automatically allows you to rewind the stream, which is great. I mean, on Twitch, there is also such possibility, but you need to click a few buttons. They hide it by default. And on YouTube later, you can watch it ever. And that's, that's important. Maybe not so important in problem solving streams where I'm not really teaching you stuff. And I don't know exact percentages, but I'm estimating that half of view time of a stream comes from live views. It being recorded is not that important, but I think it's okay, especially if, if I'm solving a particular contest, like here, uh, say this round by tourist, this one, then somebody else later who goes through those problems can watch me as an alternative editorial. Of course, it's not the editorial, it's far from it. But then it's nice even after two years, if there is such a content. I should, by the way, post some information here in comments that I made those streams. The timestamps would be nice. Why not stream just on Twitch and then post whole stream on YouTube? It's not easier than streaming to both. I need to, so again, let me highlight. I need to remember to, when I'm responding to something to highlight and then talk, uh, which is a nice feature, but I need to get used to it. I need to remember to start recording and sometimes I forget to do it. If I forget, then I need to later download from Twitch, which, which isn't the end of the world, but it's some extra work. But later I need to upload to YouTube and that like that is not significantly easier than the alternatives. And people cannot like watch on YouTube and rewind during the stream. So still streaming to both, I decided a long time ago is that is a slightly better idea, but still rather than stream to Twitch and then upload or uh, stream to both. I would prefer to only stream to one platform and maybe that one platform is YouTube. I mean, yeah, th that's the alternative. I'm only now considering streaming to both or only YouTube. What is better, lear learn algorithms and then do problems or just try to solve problems? Yeah, mix it. You don't need to learn everything first. Mix problems and learning. Yeah, I don't want to upload stuff. I don't want to record and then maybe it will be different quality because I messed something up. This is fine. And in all those options, I also consider the fact that there is something like a chat, sometimes with links. If 
there is YouTube stream with chat turned on. Maybe also there is Twitch, maybe not. Then chat is saved forever. I don't want to show chat on my screen. That's chat is too spammy for that. Too many messages are unrelated and people complained that it's mm, distracting. And I agree. I, I think it's good. Okay, it, it's good enough if I highlight messages and already it resolves some issues. If I keep streaming to Twitch mainly, like, and I only have chat on Twitch, then I will rely on highlighting messages. Still, sometimes there is a link and it would be nice if it's pasted in YouTube comments, but we can live without it. Uh, there is an option to record the vote. Yes, but it's more work. Unless you're saying that I can click some button so that automatically it would be uploaded to YouTube with a proper title and thumbnail and description playlist. With some proper setup, maybe if things can be done by other people. So I can pay somebody like a moderator to take care of some things. But that also can be said about setting up a stream in advance. Mm. It's nice to watch me. Thank you, Arafat. Streaming on YouTube, you get more beginner CP audience and beginner friendly questions. I guess so. People who watch programming on Twitch Either they already are programmers and they watch stuff on Twitch about programming or they come directly from code forces. Well, on YouTube, there are a lot of beginners. Maybe I should make a split that difficult streams happen on Twitch and easy streams do not. So what you notice, Mr. Shadow, is related to the fact that I noticed a long time ago that Twitch chat is much better. There are quality questions most of the time. It's not 100%, of course. Will I participate tomorrow? I think there is a division to round, so I don't think so. I mean, if I have time, what, what time is that? Uh, no. Maybe I've, when this ends, I was going to start streaming, so maybe instead of goodbye, I should do educational round, but I think that's too easy. If I want to get more views, I should certainly, instead of covering goodbye tomorrow, just do educational round, just after it ends. I will consider that. Yeah, not sure. Hmm. Okay, that's everything now. Uh, you will on code forces, I'm sure, find. I, I will put here information about the next stream soon, so it will be countdown to next day. Uh, there is here my blog with information about next streams. And Tuesday, which is tomorrow, that will be either goodbye 2022 or it will be educational round. I'm not sure. Maybe then goodbye, I will move to Thursday morning. Okay, last question. Uh, this thing, I didn't click. What's going on? Highlighting messages stopped working. I hope that my internet is okay. And the internet is okay, so what's now? Uh, does refreshing the website work? By the way, the website that I'm using is featured.chat. It's a just free tool made by some programmer in cooperation with Twitch. And it's very convenient. I found it today and it worked for 99% of the stream. Okay, this works. 
uh, now reading. I needed to refresh the website then, so, so it would work. Where can I find problems to learn particular algorithms? Usually, when there is an article about something, it will mention problems. If not, I don't know, use Google. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed me solving some difficult problems. Next stream, no matter what that will be, it will start from easier problems, so that's something. I want you to tell me, you can do it now in the chat or later in YouTube comments, what do you think about highlighting messages? If there is something that I should change, like maybe even font size, if it's possible to display. I mean, I like the feature, I will keep using it if possible, but if you have some comments that might help, do say that. Feedback is appreciated and I read YouTube comments. I mean, it's not that I've read 100% of them, but I read different suggestions and at least consider them. Um, I will de decide before, before going to sleep today, I will decide about the stream tomorrow. I don't guarantee yet what that will be. I was going to do a difficult contest, goodbye 2022. But if there is an educational round, I think I will just start streaming after that and I will cover the educational round and I will move the goodbye to some other day, which is good because more people will watch the stream and will find it useful. And it's bad because I wanted to practice difficult problems. I didn't like the tourist round because it was a lot of DP, at least in my solutions. So four problems in a row, it was similar in some way. Um, the feature is nice, sometimes you don't understand. Again, let me have it. Where the question ends and the answer starts. You mean inside one comment? I don't understand that. Anyway. As Areki said, adios. Bye, everybody. Have a good night or day if you're in the US. See you tomorrow. Without the future. <laughs>